blackberry pie around camp. Way past prime for the berries. Yeah, that's good. Really good. It's a bushcraft pie, man. It's gonna be good. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. I just want to explain what I'm doing in this video. It's been a couple of years since I uh, did my blueberry crumble with the Pop Rocks. You remember that video? I want to make another pie and I've been looking around for huckleberries. There isn't any huckleberries left. This is middle of September. Blackberries behind me here are pretty much finished but I think I can find enough suitable berries to make a pie. A blackberry pie around camp. This time though I'm gonna make my own pastry everything so I gotta collect enough berries to, to make this pie and boy I tell you like I don't have much time and it's still gonna be skimpy pickings as far as the berries go and I have an idea now mind you it's just an idea at this point about cooking the pie you remember last time I was fighting with those rocks and exploding and I had a heck of a time, but... For now, we'll get picking some berries. Like I say, it's uh, way past prime for the berries. There's just the odd one here and there that are good enough. They're not even that big, really. Like, they're... Dropped one already. They're kind of tiny for a blackberry. They should be basically two or three times this big but they're still sweet enough so this will work and you can see here that we have uh, a few black blackberries and some red ones that haven't matured so basically those uh, red berries are never going to mature this year and I even see some that are still green. Got some green ones starting to go a little red. Yeah, that's what blackberries do. I mean, they they just keep producing berries and producing berries uh, right till just about winter. But the green ones aren't going to mature. The red ones at this point won't mature. Whatever I can find for these black ones, even though they're tiny, that's all I'm going to get. And I did wash my hands. Uh, but I don't like to show that on video. We need a clean work surface. Get a nice clean spot here. Clean out my oven's Rocky Mountain Bushcraft cup, which I'm assuming it looks to me because I don't, I don't have all the the fancy cooking equipment to do this pie, like you know a measuring cup and this and that. But I think this is about a cup, so we'll clean that out, then we got a measuring cup. The only ingredients that you actually need is it's mostly flour, about two cups I'm going to use. Uh, about a teaspoon of salt, about a teaspoon of sugar, but I'm going to need this for my um, filling later. And I've got about... This is in the cooler, approximately a cup of butter. That's all you need for your pie crust. Okay, this is one cup. I gotta cut a little bit of this off. We'll get a couple of cups of flour in the bowl. Oh well, if I spill some, I don't care. Yeah, that's one, two cups of flour. Just a pinch of salt, like I say, about half a teaspoon. I'll just measure it out in my hand and guess. Not much. I like a sweeter crust, so I'm going to use about a teaspoon, tablespoon maybe of uh, sugar. Good enough. You can see you don't have to be precise. I'll just mix that by hand. I don't have like a spatula or any of these fancy items that bakers use. I've got to cut a bit of this off. But it's nice and firm. That's about a cup kind of firm so it might be tough. I don't think the the cubes have to be identical or anything. It's just a matter of getting it in there. 
Oh yeah, it breaks easier than cutting it. it almost looks like too much. That just about ruined my pie crust. I uh, had a pine needle in there. <laughs> well, if I find this isn't right, I'll just add a bit more flour. Now I'm just going to mix this together by hand. And then I've got some cold water out of the cooler as well. I'm going to need a little bit of that, but it doesn't take much water. First you want to break the butter, the flour all up. And then we'll add a little bit of water. It only takes approximately six tablespoons of water. And you just add a, a bit of water at a time so that you uh, get it mixed properly. And then you don't want to make your crust too runny. Like you just, you want it to be able to form into a ball. You don't want it like uh, pancake batter or anything like that. Until we get the consistency right. It's already starting. It's too dry to form a ball yet. Just mix it up good. A bit more water again. Don't add too much water at a time because you want to get it just right. I think we're there. Okay. I'll take my dough out. Just form it into a ball. They say you shouldn't um, squish it together too much and as long as it'll roll. I'm going to cut that in half because I want one for the crust and one for the top. I might actually leave a little less on the one side for my my cover or my top of the pie. Get it into a ball. That should be enough for my pie plate. Get a little bit of flour on the hood here so it doesn't stick. I have to go and find a bushcraft rolling pin. So that's the next step after I wash my hands again. I'm just looking for a round straight piece of wood for my rolling pin and all this debris here. Oh, Finn, he wants some pie too. See a nice straight, bigger piece here. I think that might work. I think if I just take a section of this, I'll have to cut it. I'm gonna have to clean it up. But I just need a piece, a foot long, really. You might be wondering um, why I know so much about pastries, ah, making pies, this, that. Even as a kid, 10 years old and up through my teens, I was always in the kitchen. And grandma and mum, great cooks. I mean, grandma's butter tarts, raisin butter tarts were just so awesome. Nobody could stay out of them. And uh, so I learned cooking all through my life from grandma and mum. Just got to get this. Cleaned up, broken, there we go. I don't care if it's a little longer, it'll work. All right, I'll clean that up. We'll roll our uh, pastry out. Get a bit of flour. Put on my homemade rolling pin here. This will work fine, I know it will. Let's get this started. Roll this out. It's working just fine. That one knob keeps hitting the hood, but I'm going to roll it out to about eighth of an inch thick. And I can just roll it onto my stick, roll it over my pan. It didn't quite sit right. I see my hood's on a bit of an angle here, so everything wants to slide, but that's all right. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's a bit shy in spots, but I can make it up with uh, the top cover to it as well. You can just pinch it together like this, and if you're shy in one spot, you can add pieces where you have too much. Now I'm just going to put this in the cooler for about an hour. I'm going to get some bur briquettes going and uh, 
show you my idea of cooking it. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour at the bottom of this. And we're good to go. While I'm waiting for my uh, pie crust to cool down in the cooler, I'm going to get a fire going in my pot. This is my idea to cook my pie. I'm going to use some charcoal. This is lump charcoal, okay? They're non-toxic. This is the best stuff I find. It doesn't get, you know, those square briquettes that you use. Um, as soon as they turn white, they just get ash all over them and you got to constantly stir them. These you don't. They burn right through without that ash. If I find I need more coals, even as my pie is cooking, I can just add more and I don't have to worry about the fumes. I know I've cooked on those other briquettes, steaks that were maybe like the briquettes weren't quite white and you can taste whatever chemicals they use in those you can just taste it in your food and it's just terrible lump charcoal that's what you want to use and i don't think i need much i really don't i'm just going to start with a few like that and then if i find that i need more i'll uh, add more there's still a fire ban, so I'm just going to use some fluid, and it'll burn up before I'm ready to cook on it. We'll just do it this way. So now I'm going to make my filling, because I want that to cool and um, amalgamate, I guess you could say, for about half an hour before I cook my pie crust and then fill it and put my top layer on. Basically, I'm going to use one cup of sugar. I'm going to use... A little more than a quarter cup cornstarch because I want to thicken this. These berries, they're soft. There's going to be a lot of juice comes out when they cook, so you want to thicken that. A couple of teaspoons of flour. I'll just sprinkle it in. Good enough. So you don't have to be exact, but I mean, you don't want a runny pie. I mean, the cornstarch and a bit of flour is going to thicken it up nice as it cooks. I'm just going to mix this up again by hand. Nice. Add my berries to that. It's nice to have this moss handy actually to clean your hands now. Instead of using paper towel. Add my berries. Another pine needle. When you're cooking stuff in the bush, you're going to get debris in, in your stuff. It's just that simple. Now i got a spider in there. I don't know if you can see him. Maybe he, he'll crawl out or try to. Maybe you can see him in there. I'm just going to mix this in by hand again, gently, because the berries are soft. I don't want to crush them. I'm just going to roll it a bit. And then I want these to sit for about an hour, and the juices will start to come out of the berries before I put it in. I don't want to overdo it and start crushing all the berries. And it'll just look like that for now. You see how dry it is right now? In about an hour before I cook the pie, there will be juices here from the sugars and everything drawing the juices out. And then it will be more like, not really a paste, but a runny material. But as it cooks, the cornstarch will thicken and the flour will help absorb the moisture. And we'll have a perfect pie. I'm going to take some tie wire. I cut uh, a couple pieces about four feet long. Figure out how much length I need for my handles. I'm going to twist it around two or three times. I'm going to wrap it around the pie like this. Hopefully I can do this without dumping it. I think I can. Up near the top, hopefully. I don't want it to fall into the coals, really. I don't want it to fall off the lip of the pie plate. So, then I'll wrap these ends around the handle. So I'm almost ready to get this cooking for about 15 minutes or so. Make sure the heat is good, my filling's ready. This is actually coming together really nicely, it really is. That's way too hot to be honest. I gotta dump some of these coals right here in the gravel. That will burn it. I don't think we need hardly any coals in there. I'm going to let that cool down for a minute. Just got to tie it. Now what I ended up doing 
was putting a piece of wire across so that it doesn't fall out of the loop there. But I'm uh, just going to tie it around the handle, both sides out. Oh, that pan is hot. I think I got the right temperature now. I'm going to push this down a bit if I can get the lid on. I'll keep an eye on it. I don't want to burn it. I really don't. Okay. Put the lid on for a little bit. And uh, get our crust nice and crispy. Okay, so it's been about 15, maybe a bit more. We'll check on our crust here. It looks the right color. I think we're good to go. It kind of shrunk back from the edge a bit, but... I'll just, when I put my top layer over, like, fold it under or whatever, and it'll be fine. So, I think we can take this off, let it cool. Time to put our filling in. Looks good, though. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, I have enough dough. I might have to make a bit more for the top of my pie. Hey, well, I think i got to make a tad more. Hey, I added a tad. I hope it fits now. It's about the right thickness. Ooh, barely. It's a little thin in spots, but hey, I should have had a little bit more when I first made it. I don't care what it looks like on the edge, to be honest. I'm just going to do it like that. Poke a couple of holes in it so it can vent. It's a bushcraft pie, man. It's going to be good. Back on here. Put my cross wire again. Hard to get my fingers over top of there because it's so hot. There we go. Ouch. Handles are even hot. Ow, I keep burning myself. It's crazy, man. Okay. rock on it keep the lid shut and away we go just gonna check on my pie here oh, wow that is getting nice and brown and everything but I'll show you my pie plate hasn't got enough support on the bottom and it's kind of folding in the middle I mean it's like it's browning nice but I've got a low spot in the middle and it's dripping out the end here. I want to try to straighten this out. I think what I'll have to do is uh, put a couple more pie plates under and then just tie it maybe a bit better. But it's working great. Boy, I don't want to lose it in there. It'd be a tragedy. Yeah, that's just not enough stability or something. We'll let the wires cool down and readjust this. I mean, it's looking really good. Pastry is perfect. Well, I gathered some rocks here, and I got a... The wire idea is not working the grandiest. Um, I'm thinking this flat rock, if I can put the pie on here, maybe tie the rock, and I'm not happy with the, uh, the wire idea because the pie is just folding in half. There's nothing to support the bottom of the pie. Well, try that, I guess worth a try try to keep the wire near the middle okay well I'll just guesstimate the distance I need oh well improvising eh when you do these kind of things well maybe I should just throw rocks in there and just get it up high enough instead of trying to wire a rock even because this wire just came off okay well uh oh well I think I'll just put rocks in there and then have the coals around them because this is just not working the wire or any of that just another blooper but hey when you're improvising things go wrong it was cooking just right just the way I wanted it actually well it wouldn't be ovens Rocky Mountain bushcraft if there wasn't bloopers <laughs> right Actually, that one might be just right. Keep trying, but I still think it's too big. Yeah, I gotta find a smaller rock. Got a couple rocks in here. 
I'm going to have to put some more coals and wait a bit again. But if I can get this to sit like that, it's nice and flat. It's only about four inches from the top. My pie can sit there. Never mind this wire idea. As long as my lid goes on, we're good. Right on. Okay, I'm going to need a few more briquettes now, but uh, not too many. What I find is the coals start to go out if I put the lid right on. So I got a little stick in here. They're kind of going. And then I put some other coals here that I can add if I need more heat. So I want to get this thing cooked for tonight, man. It is cooking though. But like I say, I got to take the lid off once in a while and add some hotter coals because the coals tend to go out if it, if they're not getting air. Okay, well, I had to babysit it quite a while. I hope it's thick enough, like it cooked enough. It's got to be done, I think. I don't care what it looks like. Should be good. But hey, improvising with a pie, what do you do? I'll bet you it's done. Actually, the crust is almost a little burnt on the bottom. Not really bad though. I'll tell you that. Mm. Crust is done just right. It's a little burnt in spots on the bottom. Done perfect on top. Try some berries. Yeah, that's good. Really good. Bushcraft pie. Very tasty. Mmm, so sweet. Really good. Crust is a bit burnt on the bottom, but otherwise, really good. I love blackberries and this, I'm not even kidding, this is really good blackberry pie. Now of course an oven would be great, control the heat, this and that, but this is bushcraft improvising to make a pie and it worked and I'm very happy with it actually. Hey Finn, Finn, you want that? Here, eat that. It's pie, man. What that? Mmm. Here, look. Maybe it's too hot for you. Here, heat that. What that? I think it's too hot for him right now. I'm sure you'll like my pie. Isn't that good? He likes it. Heat that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he likes it. So I want to thank you all for watching this video. I actually had fun making that pie and it's actually more tasty than you can imagine. Uh, it's just, that was really good. Follow the recipe, use an oven if you wish, but improvising in the bush to make a pie or anything else isn't always easy. I had to babysit it and whatever. It turned out really well, really well. I thought it would have been cooked in an hour. It took a lot longer. Thanks for watching. I do want to mention one more thing. I appreciate all of you who gave a thumbs up to the fireside chat videos that I'm going to have coming up. And episode one did awesome. A thousand comments of uh, over 11,000 thumbs up. So I appreciate it. So based on the response that I got from you fans, we're going to have episode two in a couple or three weeks. And uh, I'll tell you another interesting story. So thanks for the great response. I really appreciate you all. I truly do. So I'll see you on the next fireside chat or the next video. Right on.